Mr. Harris here and welcome to our first video of chapter 9 and in this video we'll be talking about common acids and alkalis. So this is chapter 9.1. I've posted the um, PowerPoint slide on Google Classroom and eClass so please make sure you have a look at it. So before we begin I want you to think about two words acids and alkalis. All right first Think about whether you've heard of these two words. And second, if you have any daily life examples related to these two. Okay, you can pause the video and think about it. I'll move on. So in the picture over here, you'll find some common types of acids. So you have soft drinks, you have vinegar, you have some fruits. And if you notice one thing, they all taste sour. Okay, so why do they taste sour? The reason behind is they contain some types of acid in them, okay? In socks, for example, you have carbonic acid. In vinegar, you'll find an acid called ethanoic acid. Whereas in lemon and oranges, you'll find citric acid. Of course, there are some other examples of acids. You have lotions, you have shampoos, toilet cleaners, okay, these are all acids as well. And in the lab, you, of course, you can find different types of acid as well, such as dilute hydrochloric acid, dilute sulfuric acid, and dilute nitric acid. And I guess it's fairly simple to understand that they're all acids because in the name, you can also find the word acid. Now let's talk about alkalis. So com some common examples of alkalis are toothpaste, glass cleaners, noodles, which a lot of you love eating mommy noodles and indomie. But make sure now it's the holidays you eat, you have a balance, okay? Don't always eat junk food, all right? Eat vegetables and fruits, make sure. So one very common for alkalis is that, one very common thing for alkalis is that they're slippery. So some people would also call it like soapy. Okay. So alkalis, unlike acids, they have a bitter taste. They have a bitter taste. So for example, in the morning when you're brushing, you might have, you know, sometimes eaten the toothpaste and then you'll figure out, hmm, it's a bit bitter. Uh, but I'm not sure whether all of you have, but I mean, it's okay to eat it. Eat a bit, but I don't recommend you to do so. In the in the lab, you can of course you can find some uh, alkalis, but this time it's not so obvious. So some examples are dilute sodium hydro hydroxide solution, dilute ammonia solution, lime water. Hopefully, when school when school resumes, I can, I'll be able to show you some more examples in the lab. So just to quickly wrap up, um, you can of course find. And many food and daily products that contain both acids or alkalis. So acids, they have a sour taste. Whereas alkalis, they're slippery and some of them have a bittery taste. A bitter taste. Okay. So fairly simple. Let's move on. Oh, acids and alkalis, they are irritant or even corrosive in nature now what do these two words mean okay irritant is basically something that causes itchiness or sometimes people would develop something called rashes okay and corrosive would mean something that can actually burn your skin or eyes so acids and alkalis especially those in the lab over here you will find that they have hazard warning symbols right for example these two alkali they're irritant we go up acids they are also all irrit okay some of them can even inclusive so we need to be extra careful we need to handle these acids and alkalis with care so some safety precautions that we we need to take I'll just quickly go through them. I mean, you can read it by yourselves. So, of course, like I've told you, we read the hazard warning symbols, and I'm sure that you've learned it in Form 1 already. We need to wear safety goggles whenever we're in the lab. 
not only when we're handling acids or alkalis, but whenever we're in the lab, we need to wear lab coats and gloves. Try to avoid, I mean, not try, we must avoid direct contact with acids and alkalis. Okay, we fairly anything in the lab you're not allowed to taste. Okay, when you think about that, not, not tasting or eating, not allowed in the lab. And this is something, this is like a lab skill that I wanted to introduce to everyone. So I introduced it to, to my Form 1 kids, but for you guys, please make sure whenever you use a test tube or a tube, do not add more than one third of any solution into it. So even though over here it's mentioned acid or alkalis, please also make sure whether you're adding any other solutions, unless I've, it's, I've told you, I've given you instructions, please make sure that it's only one third full, okay? This is to avoid any, if it's too full, we do not want any to spill or any anything bad to happen, okay? Simply put. And I know a lot of you are quite mischievous and you would love to mix different types of acid and alkali, but please do not do that because later on we'll learn about something called a neutralization reaction. Neutralization. So actually the reaction when you mix acid and alkalis together, we'll learn that later, but please do not do so in the lab. And of course, um, do not throw or pour any acid or alkali into the sink directly. There is a special type of bottle called a waste bowl. And then um, whenever we get the chance to do an experiment with acids and alkalis, you'll need to pour any material waste into the waste bottle okay never pour anything into the sink and finally i hope everyone is doing this right now as well we need to wash our hands basically very well thoroughly so in case anything happens just keep calm and report to any teacher or lab tech if in case acids and alkalis if they if you're skin comes into contact with them, please put your arm or hand or wherever the affected area is under running water for at least 10 minutes okay and um in case it's gone into your eyes we can use the eye wash bottle or what we in our lab we have the eye wash station so most of this you've learned in form one so this is just a quick summary for that Okay, just a quick wrap up. Acids and alkalis, they could be irritant and close, and we must handle them with care and take safety precautions. Okay, let's do some checkpoints together. Acids, question one acids taste sour, alkalis taste salty. Okay, you can pause the video and then you can answer it by yourself while I'll continue right now. Okay, the answer is false. Okay, why is it false? Because acids, they do taste sour, but alkalis, they taste bitter. Okay, let's move on. Question two. Acids are slippery, but alkalis are not. The answer is yes, it's false because al alkalis, they are slippery. Okay, it should be alkalis are slippery. Question three, acids and alkalis can be irritant or corrosive. The answer is true. Okay. So make sure you pause the video and do the question by yourself first. Finally, last question. If our skin comes into contact with an acid, we should wash the area with alkali immediately. Of course, this is false. Because as I told you, never directly read these two. Instead, you should put it, wash it with water for 10 minutes. Okay. So the answer is now through again. False, false, true, and false. Okay. Oh, I've put everything with the answers on Google Classroom. So please make sure that you go through them. Now, just to wrap up quickly, acids, they are 
sour, whereas alkalis, they are bitter. Okay. And some examples of acids, just now what we've seen, it could be, for example, it can be shampoo. And what else did we see? We saw some fruits like lemon. How about for alkalis? What examples are there? Okay, for we saw the toothpaste. And what else did we see? We saw baking soda. And there are a couple more examples. But I'm just writing a few so that we all. And how about in the lab? What type of acids can we find in the lab? We can, for example, we can find dilute nitric acid and a couple more acids. So you can go back and have a look. How for alkalis? What type of alkalis can we find in the lab? So one very common one is called sodium hydroxide solution. Okay. So this is just a quick summary, a quick wrap up for chapter 9.1.